Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Uh, my name is Pastor Abe Jeter. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. Praise our God. Well, today we're studying the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 9. And uh, uh, Jesus is sending out his apostles. Praise God. He called them, he equipped them, and he sent them. Amen. Well, praise our God. Luke chapter 9. All right. Uh, begin reading in verse 1. And as we go down, we'll share. Okay. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Well, praise our God. We see then uh, in those two verses that Jesus empowers the disciples to do the works that he was doing, in fact, okay? Uh, the Bible says he gave them power and authority. The word power, the Greek word dunamis, amen? Praise God. The Bible says, and you will receive dunamis after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now, this was prior to Pentecost, and yet Jesus was able to empower them to operate in the power that was operating in him, amen? And, of course, uh, uh, this was part of their development and training, amen? Uh, praise our God. That word dunamis, uh, it means uh, inherit power, power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature, uh, of which a person or thing exerts and put forth power to perform miracles, amen? Moral power, excellence of the soul, power and influence, which belongs to riches and wealth, and on and on and on, there many meanings, but, but dunamis, the power of God. It was the Holy Ghost power working with and through them. Amen. Well, and then uh, he says he gave them power and authority. Amen. Exousia, 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 okay? Amen, which uh, is authority. Amen. And uh, again, many definitions, but uh, uh, the power of rule or government, the power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. I like that, okay? The power of rule of, or government, the power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. Amen? Well, praise God. <coughs> Excuse me. So... So we see then that, <coughs> excuse me, he gave them power, amen, dunamis, and he gave them authority. You know, I, 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 I like to think in terms of authority is the ability to uh, give commands and enforce obedience because uh, the devil understands authority, okay, power and authority. You know, when that policeman put up his hands and, and, and says, stop, you stop because you see that badge, you see that uniform, it represents the authority of the government. But he also has that gun on his side, amen? Uh, the ability to enforce obedience. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the Bible says that he gave them power and authority, amen? And you and I have power and authority. Amen. Praise God. We have the authority to operate in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The authority to pray in the name of Jesus, to enter into God's presence in the name of Jesus. Amen. But praise God, we also have that deutimous power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. And uh, uh, we can speak, uh, we can minister in that deutimous power, and we have that authority. Amen. Amen. Power and authority. Well, praise God. Uh, let's go a little further. You know, we're not trying to branch out on this. We could. Amen. But praise our God. And so, uh, 
The Bible says authority over devils to cure diseases. Okay? Authority over devils. Amen. Uh, devils are subject to us uh, in that name. Okay? And it says to cure diseases. May God help us lay hold of that because uh, he gave them authority. We believe that we have that authority as well. Amen. Uh, in Matthew 10, uh, another glimpse at the same uh, event. It says, when he had called unto them his 12 disciples, he gave them power. And that word is really, in that case, he gave them authority. It's translated power, there, but the Greek says authority against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases, okay? Praise God. And then the Bible says he sent them out, all right? Yeah. Uh, Jesus had spent some time with them already uh, before empowering them and sending them out. We find out in Matthew 6, verse 12, after praying all night, Jesus chooses 12, okay? And there was a lot of teaching uh, of the word and leading by example before they were ready to be sent on a mission uh, that was going to further develop them and bring them to a, a certain level of maturity. And that was not the final level of maturity yet because Pentecost hadn't come. So Jesus worked with these brothers for, for three years uh, and then they had to tarry uh, for the Holy Ghost to be poured out for the Holy Ghost dispensation. But make no mistake about it, it was the Holy Ghost that was empowering them to do the work that they were doing. All right, well, praise God. Somebody said he was dwelling with them, but on the Pente yeah, Pentecost, he was going to be in them. Well, praise our God. All right, so uh, they were not fully ready until the day of Pentecost, as I said. Uh, being filled with the Holy Ghost at that time, okay? Uh, we live in the Holy Ghost dispensation. And some of you are spirit-filled, but are still babes. You're still immature and not yet ready to be sent into ministry, the ministry that God has called you into. And some people think just because they're filled with the Holy Ghost, listen, well, you know, that they are ready uh, to go into the ministry that God had called them. No, 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 no. And so many of you are spirit-filled, you know it. Well, you're not ready to be sent yet. You need to be submitted to authority. You need to sit under that pastor. You still need to be mentored. You're not ready yet. Well, <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. Listen, you still need to wait on being filled uh uh, uh you, you still need to wait. Now, not on being filled, because you, you already feel, but to a level of maturity where God can use you like he wants to use you. Not only that, there are many feelings. Praise God. And just because you feel today doesn't mean that's all he has for you. God wants to expand you, increase your capacity. Hey, many feelings. One baptism, many feelings. All right, well, praise God. Listen. You still need to be under authority and mentoring. Well, praise our God. So uh, back to Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. The Bible says he sent them, but he sent them with instructions, okay? Uh, so uh, verse 5 says, these 12 he sent forth and commanded them, says, go not into the way of the Gentiles, into any city of the Sumerians, and are you not? But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Not 2,000 years from now. It's at hand. It's within reach. You can enter into this thing, okay? Listen. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Listen. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. So he gave instructions, amen? Praise God. And so, uh, uh, and he's given instruction here uh, in, uh, in Luke. And, and, and he gave other instructions about 
what they needed to carry with them and so forth and so on, okay? Because I believe that Jesus was teaching them how to be totally dependent on him. And I, I, I don't believe he's telling us uh, not to take our Bibles with us and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he told them not to take any script with them, okay? Uh, neither bread, neither money. And don't even take two Cokes. Now, I, I don't believe that this portion applies to us, although there's some groups out there, uh, they're sending people out just like that, and they're just going strictly by faith, okay? And more power to them. But I don't believe that that's balanced for the day. I do believe, though, that God hadn't changed his mind about the anointing and the empowering and what the kingdom looked like. But, hey, leave all that amen uh, to the Lord. But I believe that we can walk in these things by faith. You know, question is, what is God saying to you? And so uh, uh, he sent them with some basic uh, instructions. Uh, he wanted them to trust him, okay? Uh, and, and, and this area... Uh, that he was really emphasizing here it was not only were we going to trust him for the supernatural, amen, and, and, and I don't think they had a problem there. I think they were going to have more struggle trusting him for their needs because a lot of times that's where we struggle, trusting him in our basic need, you know, day-to-day -day needs. And so listen to what God said in Luke 9, verse 3 says, take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip, neither bread, nor money, neither have two coats apiece. God wanted him, them to trust him. And he's developing them, and he's developing you and I. And so I, there may be some times in your ministry where God has said, I want you to trust me, or I want you to step out in faith. God, how am I going to eat? Well, I'm going to meet your needs. That's a tough area there. And sometimes we get ahead of God. I quit my job several times in Alaska trying to step out in faith. <laughs> Amen. Well, you know, what can I say? Uh, did it grow me? It did. <laughs> did it stretch my wife? It did. Because <laughs> then bills had to be paid. And brother here is stepping out by faith, leaving a good job, saying he's trusting God to meet his need because he wants to go full-time ministry. And one time God says, uh, do you trust me all the time? Yeah. Do you trust me full-time? Yeah. Is that full-time ministry? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> So, so whether you're on that job or not on that job, you trust me full time and say, okay, Lord, I'm, 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 I want to grasp what you're telling me here. But you know what? One preacher was praying for me uh, about leaving that job. And he says, God told him that he is right where I want him on that job. <laughs> so he says, I'm stopping. I ain't praying about you leaving that job. So, you know, but, but we, we need to hear from God. And, and sometimes in our zeal, we do make a, a silly mistake. So we need to make sure we're hearing from God. It's good for us to get some counseling as well. Amen. But uh, God may require you to stretch and trust him. But right here until these guys, he clearly he says, you know, I want you to trust me. Uh, verse four, Whoso, whatsoever house you enter in, there abide and thence depart. Five, and whatsoever, and whosoever shall receive you, when you go out of that city, shake whosoever will not receive you. When you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Verse 6, and they departed and went through the towns. Listen to what they were doing, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Praise our God. And so uh, with signs following, uh, this ministry went forth with signs following. Amen. And I still believe that's the way our ministry need to go forth today with signs following. Well, Herod heard about it and he was perplexed because some were saying, this is John the Baptist. And he said, nah, I know I've killed John. I took his head off. Well, and uh, maybe John the Baptist was risen from the dead. And that's why these miraculous signs have followed him. So uh, he was concerned. Uh, verse seven. Now, Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him him being Jesus, and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead and of some that Elias had appeared and of others that one of the old prophets were risen again. And Herod said, John, I beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he desired to see him, this wicked king. Desired to see Jesus. Well, he got his wish because in Luke 23, I start with verse 6. 
It says, when Pilate heard of, uh, uh, that Jesus was from Galilee, uh, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged into Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad. He already wanted to see him, okay? For he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. People want to see a miracle. People want to see a sign. But we don't do miracles for people to see signs, okay? We don't do miracles just to show uh, that the anointing is on us. No, we got to operate in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is not trying to make any points with anybody. So God help us to humble ourselves. Help us to have the right motives, uh, the right attitude. Well, and that is why we may not see many signs and wonders because either we'll take the glory, amen, we got the wrong attitude, we got the wrong purpose, okay? But nevertheless, and so here was Jesus before Pilate, uh, uh, prior to his crucifixion, and uh, Pilate was excited. He wanted to see some miracle, amen? So the Bible says in verse uh, Luke, uh, uh, not Luke, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Luke uh, 23, 9, okay? Then he questioned with him in many words. He questioned with him in many words, okay? Uh, 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 but Jesus answered him nothing. Jesus didn't respond to him, amen? And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in gorgeous, in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together. For before, for before there were an enmity between the two. They were not getting along. So, amen. And we see even in Jesus' uh, suffering, uh, he, he was a healer. He brought reconciliation, even these two wicked men. But nevertheless, all right. So, and then we're on down to where Jesus uh, fed the 5,000, okay? Amen. Uh, Luke 10. <clears throat> and the apostles, when they were returned, okay, so they come back from the mission. And they were excited. And the apostles, when they returned, told him, of, told him all that they had done. And he took them and went aside privately in a desert place belonging to the city of Bethsaida. And so uh, Jesus desired some quiet time with his disciples. They were excited and wanted to share their experiences. The people, however, had great need and they followed them. Amen. And it's interesting, praise our God, that uh, uh, according to uh, Luke here, uh, the people, when they knew it, followed him and he received them, praise God, and spake unto them the kingdom of God and he healed them that had need of healing. So, so Jesus made the people a priority. Amen. All right. And the word is, is balance. Yes, we need balance. Okay. Amen. Uh, but in this case, Jesus made the people a priority, all right? He received them. He preached the good news of the kingdom of God to them, okay? And he healed those in need. Notice that, uh, you know, uh, healing and miracles, the purpose is so that we can preach the kingdom of God to the people. And so that's the key. We want to preach the word to them because it's the word of God that's going to change life. Because the Bible says this word if it falls in the good ground, it's going to bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So it's not just in the miracles. We got to preach the word. Praise our God. Anyway, so Jesus received them, preached the word to them, and he healed those that were in need. Amen? All right. Now, while he ministered, I want you to understand that Jesus was very much aware of the lateness of the hour. He was very much aware of the people's need for food, okay? I want you to understand that Jesus is Lord of every situation in life, 
and particular, he's Lord of every situation in your life, okay? And I don't know what you're going through right now, but I want to say to you again, Jesus is Lord to every situation of your life. Well, praise our God, amen? There is no situation that he can't handle, all right? Well, praise our God. So, so in verse 12, when the day began to wear away, then came the 12 and said to him, send the multitude away for they, that they may go into the towns and country round about and lodge and get victuals for we are here in a desert place. Amen. Now, Jesus was very much aware of that. And praise our God, you know, I mean, he could have snapped at him, says, you don't, you don't think I know that? And he didn't do that. <laughs> Amen. Jesus always takes advantage of situations and turned into a teaching opportunity. He was discipling these men. He were, was developing. He knew that in a short time, uh, he was going away. And these 12 men were going to be responsible for taking this gospel to the world. Okay. And so he turned it into a teaching opportunity. And so he says, verse 13, but he said unto them, give ye them to eat. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all this people. And praise our God, uh, they seem to imply that they had the money to do it. <laughs> I understand that, that uh, uh, they were dependent on people to sow seed, uh, but... Uh, uh, he didn't say that we can't go buy the food, but he said that that was the need. Uh, but Jesus says, you feed them, okay? And they were trying to wrap their mind around that. What does he mean for us to feed? Does he mean for us to go buy food for this multitude that we can feed them? Is that what he's saying? <laughs> and who knows? Maybe they didn't have the money. But nevertheless, what is Jesus saying to you? Uh, God's uh, uh, just... just uh, it spoke to my heart uh, through uh, this word. He said, you give them to eat. Now, Jesus was saying that what you have, what God has provided is enough for you to do what God called you to do. If you trust him. Because he's able to take your little and turn it into much. Okay? Uh, he's able to take your ordinariness. You say, well, I'm just an ordinary Joe, but God is able to take your, well, you say, well, I'm not educated enough. He's able to take the education you have. Well, I'm not gifted enough. He's able to take the gifting that you have. And he can turn it into something great because it's not about you. It's more about, what, about him. And we tend to look at the natural. We tend to look at the circumstances and we limit ourselves you know, we, I said, we, we do it. Oh, God, help me. Okay, listen. Give you them to eat. Now, to Moses, he said, what is in your hand? And God was telling Moses that rod that he had in hand, put that thing down, it became a snake. And God says, you know, what is in your hand? Okay, what is in your hand? And God has said, what is in my hand? Listen. What is God saying to you and I? What is God saying to you and I? Listen, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 through 28. Listen to what it says. It says this, okay, uh, through 29. Listen to what it says. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized in the Christ have put on Christ. And there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Listen, and if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Abraham's seed, the covenant children of Abraham. God says, I'm going to bless the world through you. Listen, listen, listen. In Christ, God has given us what we need to minister to this world. And God is saying to us, you give them what they need. God wants us to minister to the people. And we're looking at circumstances and we'll think, we're thinking we're inadequate, but God is saying, you give them to them. You feed them. You teach them. 
You heal them. Uh, 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 there's something here. There's, there's, there's something here. There's something here. There's something here. There is something here. May God help us to get a hold of that. You give them to eat. Well, praise our God. They were looking at the natural, as we all do. There were 5,000 men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can understand it. I got two loaves and a few fishes. Or, uh, 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 <laughs> what did he say he had? Hey, Amen. Praise God. Five loaves and a couple of fishes. And I'm looking at 5,000 people. Uh, I know that's mind-boggling. I, I appreciate the brethren, okay? Hey, Jesus was teaching. Amen. Lord, help me, okay? And if there were 5,000 men, someone says with the women and children, there were 15,000 people. I, can you understand? The brother says, what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I understand it, Lord. But my God, I know we put on Jesus. Help us understand what that means, oh God. Oh, mighty God. Listen, listen, listen. All right, Luke 9, 14, for there were about 5,000 men, and he said to his disciples, make them sit down by fifties, uh, uh, by fifties in a company. And they did so, and made them all sit down. And then he took the five loaves and the two fishes, looking up to heaven, he blessed them and break and gave to the disciples to set before the multitude, and they did eat and were all filled. And they were taken up fragments that, that remain to them 12 baskets. They started with five loaves and two fishes. After feeding 15,000 people, 5,000 men, there was 12 baskets full of scrap. Imagine that, okay? <laughs> that was a creative miracle. God was in the flesh, in Jesus, the creator of the world. The Bible lets us know that Jesus Christ created everything by the word of his power, and they keep working by the word of his power. And so Jesus controls and maintains the universe as he sits on the throne of my heart, a created miracle. I still believe in created miracles. I believe that God can give new kidneys and, and new hearts. Uh, I believe he can give new limbs in the name of Jesus, a created miracle. Well, praise our God. Praise our God. And so we find then uh, in Luke uh, 9, 18, uh, it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. He asked them, saying, whom say the people that I am? And they answered, saying, John the Baptist. But some say Elias. And others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. And he said to them, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. Amen. And you know, he goes on and, 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 and says, blessed are thou, Peter, flesh and blood hadn't revealed this to you, but my father in heaven, he says that in Matthew. And, uh, but praise our God. It took divine revelation for Peter to understand that. Amen. And even though he said that they still didn't comprehend fully who Jesus was yet. And so he continued to teach them, you know, and Matthew, uh, just, he turned right around and told him about his death, and Peter jumped up and says, no, 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 and, and Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, and so uh, the devil is right there in, in a great circumstance uh, to pervert it, and after great victories on our part, we need to be careful, because the enemy is coming with a counterattack, so we need to be alert. Well, anyway, we're going to pick up here next week by the grace of God, amen, the Bible says in 921, he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief, uh, and, and chief priests and scribes and be slain and raised the third day. Praise God, we know that in Matthew, Peter said, no way, you're not going to do that. And Jesus had to rebuke him and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, revelation, mighty revelation of God, turned right around and had to rebuke him and say, get thee behind me, Satan. Because the enemy is there to work through your humanity and your flesh and stumble you if he can. All right, well, the Lord bless you. The Lord smile on you. The Lord shed his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus.